If you want to enter the world of Ducati, then this, the Ducati Scrambler Icon, is the cheapest way to do so. If you're Ducati and you're going about making what is your entry-level bike, how do you go about making it feel special enough at a competitive price point? Because you are the MotoGP world champions, but you're also Italian, so style has to be a given. And you're a biking brand with almost a hundred years of heritage. But the reality is you can't make a competitively priced entry-level bike with all of the performance, all of the style and all of the quality. Something there has to give, one or two of those elements. Let's have a walk round and begin with the stats. This is an 800cc bike, it's 73 horsepower, it's L-twin, it's air-cooled and it can be yours for £9,995. Now in the marketing blurb, two things are conspicuously absent from the Ducati Scrambler pages. That is any real mention of any her heritage, any nostalgia, and secondly, interestingly, any real reference to this being in any way good as a Scrambler motorcycle. Ducati have positioned this bike as a thoroughly modern alternative to the likes of the more classically inspired Triumphs and Royal Enfields. Huge amount of focus in the marketing blurb is around how modern this bike is. They've got a TFT display, you've got lean sensitive ABS, full multimedia connectivity, there's an option for a quick shifter, I could go on and on with riding modes and other bits and pieces. If we look at it first of all though, from a looks point of view, it's got a very elegant profile. And if you look at the bike compared to the 1960s scramblers that came out predominantly originally for the American market, then this is a fairly good nod to those classic era bikes of the 60s and 70s. It's got a very nice elegant profile. And what's nice about the scrambler is if I sit on it, I'm six foot one. So many of the scramblers and bikes like this, they've got a ludicrously high seat height that just isn't relevant and is too daunting for most riders. If you're up like that on tiptoes, trying to do normal riding or off-roading, it's just completely unpleasant, unless you're entering the Dakar Rally, for example. So to have a genuinely sensible seat height like this is a revelation, especially if you're anything under five foot 10 or so. Slight issue is that for someone of my height at six foot one, I am incredibly bunched up here. The soles of my feet are almost pointing directly behind me. So for long distances, I can already feel that this will not be the most comfortable bike. Being 185 kilos wet weight, I'll flip it round here with a very low center of gravity. That is immediately apparent. Maneuvering just laughably easy. And lean angle is, I mean, if you're good enough and you can actually lean like that, it will go all the way down. But lifting it back up again, it's a very, very easy bike to manage. Although they barely mention any scrambling element to this bike in the blurb, my guess is that this would be a very, very good bike for some soft off-roading. Let's do the design front to back now because it has, I always do this when I do the lean angle, it's like doing a mini workout and then I need to speak. Let's start off with a nod to those old classic bikes. You've got an X here on the front of the headlamp. The only problem I have with this is that it's plastic and it does give a very slightly tacky element to that. I don't think I'm a fan of plastic imitation on the headlamp. Continuing with the mudguard, and again, that for me just does not feel like good enough quality plastic. Although, looking at it from a positive point of view, that I'm sure will save weight. It will be extremely durable and rugged if you do want to do some, some soft off-roading on it. But really, I remain slightly unsure about that. Tank is very nice with this two-tone element here and scrambler badge. A nice little design elements here, such as Born Free, 1962. Move on to the dash, and you've got that TFT display. Pops up, beautiful looking graphics pop up. Very, very nice, and you can scroll through 
all of the different modes, really a lot of stuff that you can look into here, including fuel indicator, the range, etc., etc. So everything's very nice to look at there. If you do damage it though, you come off, for example, doing a bit of soft scrambling, soft off-roading. I've heard reports of that costing upwards of 750 pounds to replace that TFT. So that is not something you want to damage. You've got this chunky rear tire on the back as well. And that really is a very substantial width tire there. It looks brilliant from a rear view and you can see the elegance of the profile here with the chopped off rear mudguard and just the number plate at the bottom. It's a very nice looking thing. Slightly disappointed again with regards to the plastic here. You've got the same level of plastic quality on the back as you do on the front. And a final point to mention here. Let's say I'm heading off on a nice road trip. First thing I do, I've got my phone holder there on the handlebar. Go down to the seat because I'm initially shocked that there is no USB outlet on the handlebar. So I open the seat, which is extremely easy to do so. Nice Ducati detailing there. And this is where the USB port is. And for a modern bike, with all of this connectivity, this was a slight surprise to find the location here. So not the easiest to get to, but once I've got the wire in, I then realise that my wire won't actually reach to the handlebar. That just doesn't make sense to me that you'd have a USB under the seat here in 2023. But overall, a very approachable size bike, beautiful elegant lines, but slight issue for me with the fit and finish, does it indicate that of a 10,000 pound bike? I'm not so sure. Ducati may like to slightly position the Scrambler range as almost a sub-brand, but for me, this is an out-and-out -out Ducati. You can feel all of that racing and performance pedigree here coursing through its veins. It's a phenomenally good handling bike. It feels like a lamb in spring dancing around the fields. It's got that beautiful, joyful element to it. It's so light, it's so nimble. You can throw it as hard as you want from left to right and it will soak up and handle everything you have to throw at it with ease. It's a joy to ride. It gives you so much confidence. And that's, for me, the hallmark of a beautifully set up, beautifully well-balanced bike built by people that really, really know what they're doing. How much confidence do you have when you're on country lanes like here to push it to its limit, come onto the brakes, rip it into a bend and then rip out again and know that it's not going to come unstuck? 
it's, it's a bit of a sensation. One of the tricky bits of scramblers, whether it's the likes of the Triumph Scrambler range or even the lower powered bikes such as the Scram 411, they lose an element of feeling to them because as you raise the suspension, you're inevitably going to get less feeling just as you do from a four x four vehicle. But somehow Ducati have made it so this has all the feeling of a very, very well set up road bike. I'm going to do a demonstration here because this is excellent on road but it's so light and it's so manageable that I've got a feeling it's also an excellent bike for some soft off-roading so what I'm going to do to demonstrate the agility of this bike I will reverse it back here come up the hill and do a complete loop around these trees without once putting my foot down this is an excellent bike on the road, but I've also got a feeling that this would be an excellent off-roader. In fact, or in fact, I think this may be one of the most authentic scramblers of the lot because it's got the lightness and it's agile. It's got that low down grunty engine from that beautifully exposed L-twin engine. So what I'll do is a little test of the agility of this bike. I've trapped myself on a log. I will come up this hill ride around these trees all without putting my foot down. Now that may seem easy for you, but I'm no off-road rider and I'm hoping this will demonstrate the ease of use of this bike. The simple off-roading ability, but also how easy is it to navigate in between these tight sections with the agility of it. I hope to be able to demonstrate this well. And I begin. And we'll stop there. Natural place to stop. <sighs> I hope I proved my points enough with that. I wish that log wasn't there, but you get the point. Easy, easy bike to live with. And really, if you're going off road, what you want, or what you want from a novice point of view, like my point, you want something that you actually feel like you want to take off road, not something that's too daunting where you look at it and think, what if I end up dropping the bike? What if I do this, that? So from that point of view, Ducati Scrambler scores very, very highly from the road dynamics point of view. And I would also say from the off-road potential point of view as well. There are some negatives. The comfort. After 20 minutes on this bike, it turns into a slow torture because firstly with the cramped riding position, that's number one. Secondly, the beautifully characterful vibey engine starts to slightly vibrate through your foot. And that's not usually a problem if the riding position was more open, but because it's such a cramped riding position, those vibrations are amplified through the sole of your foot. And there's one final thing that makes long distances impossible on this bike. The width of the seat. It's not far off bicycle width. It is incredibly uncomfortable. So really in its current position or in its current state, you wouldn't be able to use this for any more than a Sunday morning blast. You would have to do some decently in-depth things to make this a comfortable bike. Pillion Comfort. It is, again, quite bunched up. Again, 20 minutes or so would probably be fine, but it's definitely on the more crunched up side of things. Turning circle as well. Bearing in mind, this probably isn't a long distance spike, so you'll be using it quite a lot in the city. It is marketed predominantly, or predominantly as an urban bike, but it's got a very, very poor turning circle. So, moving in and around traffic, 
navigating past tight roads in order to filter through traffic. It's difficult with this because that really is a compromised, a compromised turning circle. I would say probably if you're, if you're anything above the Italian, well, the average Italian male's height, five foot nine or above, this will probably be too small a bike for you. I stopped at the pub to have a break because I almost collapsed on the bike. Don't worry, please don't worry, I will soldier on. But can you see, can you see that? We're riding along and it must have been a hornet. It, it must have been about that size, Monica said, something like that size. Directly towards me like a missile, but it went with its stinger first, straight into my neck, stung me and then half died and then collapsed somewhere on the, the road doing about 40 miles an hour, like an arrow. So I was feeling like I was shot with a bullet, but then that bullet released poison into my neck, searing down my primary artery. I think I'll survive, but if I start collapsing or talking nonsense, then you'll know why it is. Let's look at the competition. I'll start off with the Triumph Scrambler, 900cc. Now this is a bike that is in direct competition with the Ducati. It's two to three hundred pounds cheaper than the Ducati. And here are the key points for me. If you're looking at these two bikes, the Ducati Scrambler and the Triumph Scrambler side by side, the Ducati as a Scrambler, as in theory what the bikes are meant to be, is infinitely better. It's about 35 kilos lighter than the Triumph and it feels much more agile, much, much more manageable. And on the road, again, I would have to say the Ducati wins it because it still maintains that feeling of connection on the road. You don't have any of that feeling where you've been slightly raised and you lose that connection to the road slightly like you do with the Triumph. And because it's so, so much lighter, the Ducati both on-road and off-roads feel more agile, feels more nimble. However, the Triumph Scrambler feels like a much, much more substantial proposition. All of the parts feel like they're of a more premium nature compared to the Ducati. It feels like you can go touring two up, you can ride further than the Scrambler. It's a more impressive package to look at, to feel, to touch. So they're two, in theory, similar bikes, but from completely different angles. If you like dynamism, performance, Ducati for you. If you like a more all-round bike with beautiful materials, no element of design left unturned. And two up comfort, the Triumph will be for you. I look at two more here. One is the Moto Guzzi V85 TT. Now you may not think this is directly a competitor, but this is available for £10,450 at Moto Guzzi right now. And that puts it just £500 more than the Ducati Scrambler. And that is a much more substantial bike than the Ducati Scrambler. So for not much more money, you get a lot more bike. 
You've also got the Honda Trans app now that's come out at just under 10K. And again, you get a lot more bike for your money with the Trans app. Final one I'll do here, because this for me is one of the closest matches. It may not be a scrambler, but the Kawasaki Z650 RS is about 2,300 pounds cheaper than the Ducati Scrambler. It has similar performance, similar weight, similarly good on-road performance, yet it is infinitely cheaper and it's got a very similar build quality level. And this for me is where the slight issue with the Ducati Scrambler lies. Compared to the competition around it, it does look like it's slightly on the more expensive end of the spectrum. It looks like it's slightly overpriced for what you get. Give me this bike for 20 minutes on a test circuit and I'll tell you it's excellent. But that focus on performance has come to the detriment of areas such as that final level of quality finish on a few of the plastics and the everyday comfort and practicality. In other words, areas away from the performance focus have had to take a hit in order for this to be what is a dynamically excellent bike. And that is your entry point into the world of Ducati. It turns out you can't quite have it all.